Welcome to Roadie Free Radio's Michael Bloomfield Primer. Today marks the 35th anniversary of Michael Bloomfield's passing in 1981. So Michael's influences were the Three Kings, Albert King, Freddie King, and B.B. King, Big Joe Williams and Otis Rush, as well as Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf. And he played with a lot of these people. He got to play and learn from a lot of his idols. He cut his teeth by playing in some of the early blues clubs on Chicago's South Side, but he really sought out musicians and, and uh, different styles of music wherever he could find them. He was known for playing a Fender Telecaster in the early part of his career, and then he switched over to the Gibson Les Paul for a sweeter, more full tone rather than that aggressive, uh, stinging Telecaster tone that he had in the beginning. The first two records you gotta have in your collection are the Paul Butterfield Blues Band and Paul Butterfield Blues Band East West. The first one is definitely a little bit more rooted in that classic Chicago blues sound. The second one is as well, but they start to branch out and start to open up the songs, particularly on tracks like East West. Next one up would be Bob Dylan's Highway 61 Revisited with the classic track Like a Rolling Stone. If you don't own this record, go out and buy it. It is incredible. Michael was also there with members of the Paul Butterfield Blues Band and Bob Dylan at the Newport Folk Festival when he went electric, and it was crazy. Next up, Michael formed a band called the Electric Flag. His vision for this band as sort of a celebration of American music. A lot of horns going on, a lot of blues, uh, fronted by Nick Gravenitis, Buddy Miles on drums. Killer, killer band. The album I would get for this would be A Long Time Coming. The next record I would get would be Super Session. It features Al Cooper, Stephen Stills, and Michael Bloomfield. Now Michael suffered from insomnia terribly, so he only plays on the first side of this record, but the few tracks that he's on are absolutely incredible. Kicking the album off with Albert Shuffle. To prove the critics wrong that, that what they did in the studio was a lot of trickery, Al Cooper and Mike Bloomfield went out and recorded the live adventures of Michael Bloomfield and Al Cooper. Again, unfortunately, Michael suffered from insomnia during these shows as well, so Al was forced to call in some ringers. So there's a lot of cool playing. Johnny Winter, a young Johnny Winter, makes an appearance on this record. Finally, if you're a guitar player and you want to learn a little bit more about Michael's playing, there's an album called If You Love These Blues, Play Them As You Please. These were interviews that Michael did that made their way onto a record where basically at the beginning of each song, he tells you the key that he's playing and in the style of a player that he's trying to emulate. In terms of books, the first book that I was turned on to about Michael Bloomfield was Ed Ward's The Rise and Fall of an American Guitar Hero. The second book that I got was called If You Love These Blues by Jan Mark Walken and Bill Keenum. If you're looking to play like Michael, there's a great book out there by the series uh, Legendary Licks called Michael Bloomfield Legendary Licks. It comes with a CD uh, so you can jam along and learn some of the stuff that Michael was doing. There's a lot of tablature in there. A lot of his signature tunes and signature licks are in there. So check that out. Uh, last but not least, actually second to last but not least, Bloomfield author and historian David Dan has a book coming out in the next couple of years uh, that he's been working on for probably the last 10 years at least, all about Michael Bloomfield's life and his music and his legacy. I talked to him at length in our interview, so check that out. Go to roadiefreeradio.com, click over to the podcast section, search for David Dan, and uh, I think you'll find that a pretty cool interview about Michael and about writing um, in general. All right, finally, and something that is most um, close to my heart and that I'm really proud of, is this box set right here that was produced by Al Cooper for Sony Legacy Recordings uh, a couple of years ago. This box set has three CDs of music that Al went back through and put together an incredible collection of Michael's work. Now, basically you've got The Roots. Roots is the first CD. You got Jams the second one. The third one is Last Licks, kind of later stuff of Michael's. Um, and then finally, and last but not least here, is Sweet Blues, the DVD, a film about Michael Bloomfield that my good friend Bob Sarles and his wife Christina Keating directed 
and produced. I was fortunate enough to be a co-producer on it. So there you go, guys. There's my Michael Bloomfield primer for February 15th, 2017. 35 years to the day that Michael Bloomfield left us for the great concert in the sky. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Head over to roadiefreeradio.com. Check out some previous podcasts, particularly my interview with author David Dan. And keep tuning in. You never know where I'm going to pop up. I'll see you next time. No roadies, no rock and roll.